Okay, so this is a super, super exciting day for me and for Koanga and for the urban garden. Yes. And we've, um, we're, uh, it takes me back to the crowdfunder that we did um, a year or so ago. And we, we asked people to support us to get to take this whole urban garden up another level. And today's the day that we're going to be um, putting up the greenhouse. Super exciting because we've got this little space here on a concrete pad outside the door and we're going to build a, a greenhouse that's going to have all kinds of stuff in it. So the things that we've ticked off on our list so far that we um, got the funding for was we have bought a caravan for our urban garden apprentice, which is Sarah. Yes. And we've put a roof over the can to make it more livable in the summer and the winter and built an outdoor kitchen with a roof over that as well, obviously. And we've found Sarah who's a bit of an animal whisperer, so she's awesome with the animals in the urban garden. And we have built a guinea pig tenement, which is a pretty exciting system within our urban garden. And today we're finally, um, this is the result of a lot of like design work and getting carried away with all the things we could do and then bringing it back down to what's real for most ordinary people that like us who, you know, haven't got a lot of money and necessarily a lot of skills. And we're about to do this and we have done a lot of um, where there are other things that we are going to do which we've done the research on and are about to happen um, the legal composting toilet that um, where that sh sh that is going to enable us to legally recycle the minerals and the nutrients that come from our human manure and urine is well on its way um, the passive solar dryer we have the design work and we just have to build it now the water, a water filter which shows how you can take out fluorine and chlorine. We've also done the design work on that and we're going to be building a bone, a bone char um, water filter to show people how, how they could do that themselves. And we are yet to work on the, um, the fungi system which we'll have in the urban garden. I think we've got the space but we haven't had time to do that, set that up yet. And finally, um, we originally actually were only going to build a wall here on the roof, but we actually, working through the design process, we decided to actually put a full greenhouse in, so Tora will tell you about that in a minute. And we made a decision not to put an aquaponic system in after several years of getting really excited about it, because we've come to the conclusion that aquaponic systems require a lot of skill to run and manage, and when you're teaching people from scratch in, the, in, in an urban garden and at home, it feels like it requires a level of skill that is above what we can cope with here um, and what most people can cope with at home. And it also requires um, high levels of power reliability and um, yeah, there, there are a lot of inputs and there are a lot of systems within an aquaponic system that feel like they're beyond the reach of most ordinary home gardeners and we decided we could do better by building um, well, we're going to put a soldier fly farm in here, which is going to... Actually, this greenhouse is... Tora said yesterday, this greenhouse is going to end up being the heart of the urban garden. Um, the soldier fly farm is going to provide food for the chickens year-round, and the, the waste from the soldier fly farm will feed worms, which will also feed chickens year-round. And um, on top of that, all the food production up vertical spaces and the wicking beds are going to provide a lot of extra food. And the chickens in turn um, provide the compost to fill the wicking beds with and the whole urban garden. You get so much compost out of that chicken run. So we're really excited about this and um, this is the next step. And Tora, do you want to just explain? Tora worked through most of the design, like how to actually build this. and. Um, and so what are you going to do? Yeah, um, so what we decided was a mono pitch roof was the simplest thing to have here and it's just going to tuck in underneath the eave of that roof. Um, we've got 90 by, well, 100 by 50 Douglas fir framing and we've double wrapped both sides of that with plastic. Um, in order to achieve a tight finish on the plastic we had to, it was a bit of trial and error and we basically had to wrap timber around the edges and then Pulling that timber, pull the whole sides over and fix it down with screws. Um, the reason we use screws was to make it adjustable, so as the weather changes and the plastic shrinks and expands, we can always tighten it or loosen it off. Because we're building it in the middle of winter, right? We're so building it in the middle of winter, so in summer it's likely it might need to be adjusted. Um, so we've pre-framed all our walls, because this is sort of the easiest way of doing it. Um, you can see here, we've got the damp proof membrane underneath, and this plastic is wrapped around and up. And then we've got these pieces of timber 
along the side which has been wrapped in and that's what we've used to stretch it outwards and upwards. So it's fixed along the bottom and then these three sides are adjustable. That there is going to be our high window and there's another wall the same that has a, another high window. We're also going to have a low vent on the south side to allow cool air to enter. We're going to build a permanent like wicking bed right round the whole three sides of it which means we can use these two vertical spaces here that won't shade anything else. We'll put yep. netting probably from the wicking bed right to the roof. Yep. In the winter we'll grow peas. Maybe there are other things we can find that grow tall in winter. Summer we'll have beans and cucumbers and maybe pumpkins and whatever we can find that will grow to the roof. Americans, cucumbers, yep, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Tomatoes, yep. And then we'll have a soldier fly farm and a worm farm and all the rest of the space in here apart from Walking space will be, we'll use these wicking beds which we've already had in use for quite a while and we're pretty excited about. I'd like to have some um, turmeric. Yeah, yeah. We, in the very, on the very front in the heat we'd like to grow ginger, turmeric and galango and maybe um, it's a great place for like water spinach and water chestnuts yeah. too in the, in the summer and the winter. Well there'll be loads of other things we can grow so we're really excited about it and Huge thanks to everyone who supported this um, crowdfunder and project.